Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Thanks for joining everybody online. Thanks for joining in. <clears throat> All right. Great. Um, let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we thank you for today. Once again, we thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, we thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. We thank you for the privilege that we are gathered together in your name. Holy Spirit, come and do what you do best. We honor you in this place today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, um, let's go to the last chapter. Are we in the last chapter? Chapter 10? Okay. Yay, hooray, last chapter. Congratulations, you've made it to the end. So once we are done with this chapter, be very happy to know that we will not be having any more classes with me. <laughs> uh, okay. So chapter 10 uh, talks about living a lifestyle of worship. Um, so up until now, we've learned uh, a lot of things about praise and worship, isn't it? Uh, definition of what praise is, definition of what worship is, uh, Hebrew words for praise, Hebrew word for worship, uh, what is worship. Uh, we've learned quite a bit uh, in depth, I should say, of what praise and worship is. And I hope that has helped you um, in your journey as a worshiper. Uh, we'll conclude this course with this chapter on how can we live a lifestyle of worship okay a lifestyle is simply means how you live your life that's what a lifestyle is okay um, worship is not just limited to singing or playing an instrument I hope I've made that very clear if you still think that worship is only singing and dancing and playing an instrument you're terribly wrong I'll get that out of your head uh, worship is a Lifestyle. Everybody say lifestyle. Okay, so the meaning simply means how you live your life. Understood? So uh, let's look at a few uh, points on how can we live a lifestyle of worship. Um, there's this person called Francis of Assisi, not Francis of BC. <laughs> uh, this is a saint, old saint called the Francis of Assisi. He said, preach the gospel at all times. Preach the gospel at all times. If necessary, use words. i say that again. He said, preach the gospel at all times. And if necessary, use words. What he was saying is, you preach the gospel without preaching. That means let your life, the way you live your life, preach. The way you treat one another be the way Jesus would treat one another, right? What you speak, what you say, how you live your life um, should be a testament of another gospel, okay? So uh, let's learn a, a few things about how can we live a lifestyle of worship. <clears throat> uh, the first point in your notes is mentioned is a life of kindness and generosity. A life of kindness and generosity the first point for us to remember on how to live a lifestyle of worship or a life of a true worshiper is first thing is be kind okay uh, kindness and generosity we'll get to that second word in just a minute generosity um, let's look at the scripture that is mentioned in your notes it's in hebrews 13 15 to 16 hebrews 13 15 to 16 it says Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips. Give thanks to his name. That's verse 15, isn't it? And we've looked at this verse before in this course. It doesn't stop there. It says, offer up sacrifices, give thanks to his name. But in doing that, verse 16, it says, but do not forget to... Do not forget to do 
good and to share with such sacrifices god is well pleased do not forget to do good don't forget to do good so the greek word that is used there for good is simply saying be kind be kind and generous i think the world will be a, a very better place if everybody were kind to one another isn't it yes if every human being was kind to one another, we wouldn't have world wars. Yeah, we, we, we wouldn't have casteism. Yes or no? If you would just learn to treat each other as equals, as being kind, um, the world would be a better place. Actually, the whole world would have been evangelized by now if the church was kind. <laughs> uh, so be kind to one another. <clears throat> uh, let's look at another scripture. So, um, okay. So in your notes, there are some examples of how we can be kind to one another. Um, so, but before we look at that, you tell me some of the ways that we can be kind to one another. Some ways, how can you be kind to one another? Examples? Everybody understands what it is to be kind, right? So what are you thinking so much? Tell. Huh? Speaking truth? Okay. Speaking truth is being kind. Okay, what else? What is kind in Hindi? Kind. Dayalu. Okay, thank you, Paromita. Okay, so, so Akhil is mentioning being empathetic, being polite, uh, being be patient. Sanjay says, by being patient, you're expressing kindness. Um, wow, that's awesome. Okay. How else? Come on. How else can you be kind? How can How else can you express kindness? Sorry? Good behavior. Okay. Okay, good boy, good girl. How else? You've never been kind in your life or what? Huh? The way you talk? Okay. So what do you use to talk? Words. Uh, so you can be kind with your words? Yeah? We can hurt a lot of people with our words, isn't it? James chapter 3 is all about, one full chapter is about taming the tongue. If you haven't read that chapter, please read it. Right? James compares the tongue to a rudder of the ship. Such a small thing can change the direction of the way the ship can go, maneuver. And he's comparing that to tongue. And, and our words, life and death is in the power of the tongue, Bible says, isn't it? So what we declare, what we speak, and uh, some time ago we learned that words attract presence. What kind of presence? Depends on the kind of words that you use, isn't it? Yeah? Um, so you, we can be kind to one another with our words. Someone said polite, isn't it? Sympathize, yeah. Is Being polite is what? What do you mean by being polite? One of the ways of how you express polite. Thank you. That is one way of saying being polite, isn't it? Someone brings you something or gives you something or does something for you. How you acknowledge by saying thank you. That is being polite. Please, can you come here? Please, can you do this for me? What is that? Being polite. Yeah, that's, and so you're, by being polite, you're expressing kindness yeah um not judging others uh, someone says okay yeah not judging others what else what else how else can you be kind think 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 because if you don't think you're not going to live that lifestyle well behavior okay so all right not selfish yeah selfishness not being selfish Selfless, opposite of selfish. Like that means you're always giving, which is connected to generosity, the other part. 
kind to one another in our actions. One of the points in your notes, it says, kind to one another in our action. Actions means what? In the way you act, like what you express, isn't it? Um, you, al you always bring a cup of coffee for me. That's ex expressing an action. That's being, just being kind and polite and all of that, isn't it? Uh, <clears throat> get generous with our resources. <clears throat> Not selfish, but rather share with what we have with others. Okay, so we learned a little bit about kind. <clears throat> um, okay, let's one, one more, very quickly. Let's look at Psalm thirty-seven. <clears throat> Excuse me. Psalm thirty-seven. Psalm thirty-seven, verse three. Psalm thirty-seven, verse three. A well-known verse. It says, "Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness." Uh, now, if you read this psalm, Psalm 37, from verse 1 to 7, okay, we're not going to read that, I'm just saying, you will read these words mentioned at least three to four times. It says, do not be afraid. Or some translations will say, do not fret. Right? It says, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, trust in the Lord. And while you're not being afraid, while you're trusting in God, while you're doing all of this, do good. In other words, be kind. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, last class, guys. <laughs> um, so we kind of understood that. Um, what is generous, generosity? What do you understand by generosity? Okay, help me out with the Hindi again, if anybody can. Helping others faster. Okay. Helping others. All right. Thank you. Uh, what's the Hindi word for generosity? Anyone? Udartha. Okay. Udartha. All right. Correct, no? Okay. So um, everybody understands what Udartha is? Correct? Am I saying it right? Okay, so generous, generosity. Um, how can you be generous? How can you be generous? Helping each other? How? Hmm, easy answer, helping each other. When they are in need, okay. So some of the ways by uh, how can you express this, these are all not just thinking. These are all actions. A lifestyle is how you live, isn't it? John 1.1 1, 1 says the word became flesh. There was action, word in action, right? And so we can't just believe in the Bible and not live life according to the Bible. You have to do. And that's why I'm, I'm getting you all to think. Okay? If you don't think, and if you just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not asking you to mug up. By heart, okay. Lifestyle of worship, point one, kindness and generosity, uh, point two. I don't care because if you don't understand any of this, uh, you will forget it by the time we finish this class. So, how do you express generosity? Helping the poor, okay. What are the some what are some of the things that you can be generous with? The finances. Finances, okay. So let's say we have a, ch a charity organization or an in someone gives a huge check to an NGO or anything. You say, okay, thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving us with, you know, blessing us with this finances, isn't it? So, is money the only way you can express generosity? How else can you express?
can I be ex uh, can I be generous with my time? Yeah. yeah. So, um, let's say I'm I'm taking my time to come and meet with you and uh, yeah. Okay. Amen, Miriam. Uh, so when you give someone your time, you're being generous, isn't it? Time is actually the only thing that your time and words are the most priceless things in this world right now, isn't it? So when you say that I'm going to spend time with you, I'm going to keep my phone aside, I just want to listen to you, you are being very generous with something that's very precious to you, isn't it? I'm giving you my time, you're being generous, isn't it? Um, so kindness and generosity is being selfless, like you were saying, you know, not being selfish. Is you're just giving. Uh, I love, I'm just going to read a wonderful story. How, how many of you have heard of this person called Alexander the Great? Alexander the Great, the Conqueror. Heard? No? Yeah, neighbor. You don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, those online, you've heard of Alexander the Great, right? Obviously. Yeah. Okay. Um, so there's this story of uh, of his life. It's uh, and it's titled as Royal Generosity. Uh, it, it, this is what the story is. I'm just going to read it. Okay. It says, the story is told that one day a beggar by the roadside was begging and asked money from Alexander the Great as he was walking by. The man was poor and wretched and had no claim upon the ruler no right even to lift his hand. Yet the emperor threw him several gold coins. You're following the story? right? There's a beggar on the roadside. Alexander the Great was passing by. He begged, give me some money. Alexander threw several gold coins. Okay, But the story continues. It says, a minister Alexander the Great's minister was amazed and astonished at his generosity and commented, he's saying, Sir, copper coins would have been enough for this beggar. Why did you give him gold coins? What is the minister saying? Copper coins would have been enough for this beggar. Why did you give him gold coins? So Alexander, it says, he responded in royal fashion. He said, Copper coins would suit the beggar's needs, but gold coins suit Alexander's giving. Okay, if you didn't understand, the depth of the story is just quite amazing. It's your loss. <laughs> Saying copper coins would suit his needs, but gold coins suits who I am, my giving. The story says he responded in royal fashion. Now, Bible says we are the sons, the children of the living God, isn't it? That means he's bestowed royalty on us. And so when we demonstrate generosity, we are demonstrating the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Right? And so one first point in how we can live a lifestyle of worship is being kind and being generous. Um, let's move on to the next point. The second one is living a life of holiness and consecration. A living a lifestyle of holiness and consecration. So the root word for holy in the Hebrew, or the Hebrew word for holy means kadosh. That's the Hebrew word. For holy is kadosh. Uh, when you open a Hebrew Bible and read all the times where holy, holy, holy is mentioned, you will see kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. Uh, and so what is the meaning of that? is to be set apart, to be cut and be set apart, to be cut off. That's exactly what it is, to be set apart. Now, we will, we will not understand how to live a lifestyle of worship unless we understand the holiness of God. Are you with me? Right? If you, have to, if you want to learn how to live a life of holiness, you need to look at the one who is holy. You cannot look at the world and say, I'm going to live a holy life. Isn't it? And so, first thing what we need to understand is why we need to live a holy life is because our God who has called us is holy. There is no one like him. Right? Um, 
you know, I've said this story before. Um, actually, I don't think I've said this in this class. Um, so there was a singing competition happening in, in, a, in a school in Coimbatore. Uh, Coimbatore is a, a, a place in Tamil Nadu. Uh, singing competition. Um, and so uh, the principal of the school said that you can sing any song you want to, any religion, uh, no problem. But you should not mention the name of your God in, this, in your song. Understood? Singing competition. Students can come and sing songs of any religion, any background. The only rule was that they should not mention the name of their God. As long as they're not doing that, it was fine. So students started coming, took up the mic, and started singing uh, one by one. And then there was this one little boy who came. And uh, he started singing in Tamil, uh, Parisuttar. So that means holy. Uh, in Hindi, we say Parishutta Atma, Pavitra Atma, right? It says, yeah. Um, he started singing Parishuttar, Parishuttar. Uh, and then the principal comes running. And uh, this is a true story, by the way. Um, he comes running and he yells at the student. I said, I told you not to mention the name of your God. A student says, but I did not mention the name of my God. And then the principal goes, who else is holy other than Jesus? Isn't that awesome? Right? Our God is holy. He is like no other. When, we, when you and I think of holiness, we think only about moral purity. That means if I say live a holy life, First thing you will think is, okay, I'm not going to steal, I'm not going to lie, I'm not going to commit adultery, I'm not going to commit murder. These are all the things that you will, we will think of. Are you with me? Holiness, yes, moral purity is, is part of holiness, but that alone is not holiness. When we say that God is holy, we, we are not saying that he does not sin, or he does not murder, or he does not kill, etc. What we, when we say that God is holy, we are saying that he cannot sin. It is not in his nature. We are talking about the person of God when we say that he is holy. It is not just an attribute. We say that God is merciful, he's faithful, he's loving, he's kind. Right? We, those are all like the attributes of who God is. But when we talk about the holiness of God, we are talking about the person of God. That is who he is. And so if we, if you and I have to live a life of holiness, we are called to be set apart from the world. We cannot have this attitude of compromise. What's that Hindi word? Chalta hai? Ay, chalega. Chalta hai. It's okay. One puff, no problem. It's okay. Compromise. It will kill your spirit. Compromise will destroy your calling. Compromise will ruin your life. The one thing that is what destroyed Samson? Compromise. He became blind because he was compromised. What does that tell, uh, tell us about it? Is If you compromise with the ways of the world, you will become blind to the calling of God. Are you with me? And so... Living a lifestyle of holiness is more than just living a morally pure life. It's not just about I'm not going to sin. It's not just about I'm going, not going to commit adultery or murder. It's beyond that. Are you with me? Right? In Exodus chapter 19, you don't have to turn. Exodus chapter 19, God says, I brought you out of Egypt not so that you can be free and run around like headless chickens. I brought you out of Egypt to myself, God says, Exodus 19. And so when you say that we are being set apart, you are not being set apart for the sake of being set apart. Okay, now you go do whatever you want to do. No. You are being set apart unto him. Right? So if you've done any, any work in the kitchen, like cutting or whatever, like you cut the vegetable, what do you do? Cut. And push it aside, isn't it? All the good part, one side. And all the bad part, the other side, and throw, isn't it? And so when we, when we are called to be set apart, we are called to be set apart 
to Jesus. And we learn to be holy from looking at the one who is holy. Are you with me? Yes? So please don't misunderstand holy or don't reduce holiness to just moral purity. Are you all with me? Yeah? Um, so, what, so many scriptures that's mentioned in your notes. First, first thing is Romans 12, 1 to 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God. Romans chapter 12 is a wonderful chapter. Uh, you'll learn more about it when you do the course, uh, Romans, in your final year. Uh, Romans chapter 12, Paul is writing, I'm begging you, my brothers, by the mercies of God. So from Romans chapter 1 till Romans chapter 11, Paul is talking about the mercies of God. 11 chapter, he's in very different ways, he's talking about God's mercy. And now finally in chapter 12, he's saying, okay, now, therefore, I have given you 11 chapters of introduction of the mercies of God. Because you understand his mercy, live a life of holiness. Offer yourself as not just sacrifice, because in the old covenant, a sacrifice was dead by the time it was on the altar. He's saying, offer yourself as living sacrifice. Thank you. That means every day in your life, you have to die to yourself and say, Lord, I surrender. You live with me. You live through me. Not my will, but yours be done. Okay, living a life of holiness and consecration. At this point, is so important that I cannot just teach you in this 20 minutes, 40 minutes that we have. Uh, I want you to study further on this by yourself. You ask the Holy Spirit. The first name of the Spirit of God is what? What is the first name of the Spirit of God? Holy. He is the one who teaches us, empowers us to live a holy life. Are you with me? Right. I was. See, you know, most of you who look at me know me as a pastor and a teacher, uh, a worship leader, etc. Uh, doesn't mean I was a saint all the time. I had my fair shares of uh, naughty things that I did. <laughs> right. I was. I would smoke. I would drink, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then there will be times where I would say, "Okay, Lord, from tomorrow I'm not going to drink. From tomorrow." No more cigarettes. Two days later, yeah. So in your strength, in our own strength, right? In your strength, you cannot do much because the flesh, the fallen nature of the flesh, it loves sin. It loves pleasure, temporary pleasure, right? Why do a lot of young people uh, uh, you know, have sex before marriage because it gives them pleasure, temporary pleasure, pleasure out of the covenant of marriage. Are you with me? With your own strength, you cannot overcome your addictions. With your own strength, you cannot live a life of holiness. The Spirit of God, whose first name is Holy, He empowers you. He will give you the strength to overcome. It is with Him we overcome the world. Are you with me? Amen? Right. So a life, a life of holiness and a consecration. I, I can talk about this uh, more and more, but uh, yeah, let's move on to the final point. We are learning about living a lifestyle of worship. The first point was live a life of kindness and generosity, and then a life of holiness and <clears throat> consecration. <clears throat> and finally, a life of obedience. A life of obedience. 1 Samuel 15, 22. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, it says, So Samuel said, As the Lord has 
as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. Obeying, obeying our God is better than sacrifice. Obedience is the language of intimacy. Uh, John 14, 15 and verse 21, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. That means, if you love me, obey. And verse 21, it says, And he who has my commandments and keeps them or obeys them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Okay, uh, let's go to Exodus chapter 40. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we looked at this chapter before, something I must have done before. Are you guys doing uh, online all okay? All right. <clears throat> I want to read a bit of this chapter. Is that okay? Can we read this chapter a little bit? Yeah, Exodus 40? All right, here we go. It's a quite a long chapter, so just follow along with me. Exodus chapter 40, it says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Right, God is saying something to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. You shall put, up, uh, put in it the ark of the testimony and partition of the ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table and arrange the things that are to be set in order on it, and you shall bring in the lampstand and light its lamp. Verse 5. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony and put up the screen of the door of the tabernacle. Then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Verse 7. And you shall set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water in it. You shall set up the court all around and hang up the screen of the court at the court gate. Verse 9. And you shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it, and you shall hallow it and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. Verse 10. You shall anoint the altar of the burnt offerings and all the utensils and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy. Verse 11. And you shall anoint the laver and its base and consecrate it. And then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and wash them with water. Verse 13, you shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. Verse 14, and you shall bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood through their generations. Verse 16. Very important. Thus Moses did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. So he did. What does that mean? Moses obeyed. Right? Yeah. 15 verses of... God is saying, do this, 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 do this. What was Moses' response? Moses did. The story doesn't end there. Let's go. Verse 17. And it came to pass in the first month of the second year and the first day of the month that the tabernacle was raised up. So Moses raised up the tabernacle, fastened its sockets, set up its boards, put in its bars and raised up its pillars. So he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering of the tent of, on the top of it as the Lord commanded Moses. Second time. <clears throat> Verse 20. He took the testimony <clears throat> excuse me and put it <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. He took the testimony and put it into the ark, inserted the poles through the rings of the ark and put the mercy seat on top of the ark Verse 21, and he brought the ark into the tabernacle, hung up the veil of the covering, and partitioned of the ark of the testimony as the Lord had commanded Moses. Third time. Verse 22, he put the table on the tabernacle of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the veil. He set the bread 
in order upon it before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses fourth time. Verse 24. He put the lampstand in the tabernacle and the meeting across the table on the south side of the tabernacle. And he lit up lamps before the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses fifth time. He put the gold altar in the tabernacle of meeting in front of the veil, and he burnt sweet incense on it, as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. Which time is it? Sixth time. Thank you. He hung up the screen at the door of the tabernacle, and he put the altar of burnt offerings before the door and the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, and offered up burnt, offered it up the burnt offering and grain offering, as the Lord commanded Moses. Help me out. Seventh time. He set the laver between the tabernacle of meeting and the altar and put water therefore and therefore washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons would wash their hands and their feet with water from it. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of meeting, they when they came near the altar, they washed as the Lord commanded Moses eighth time. And he raised up the tab uh, as he raised up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar, he hung up the screen of the court gate. So Moses finished the work. Ah. <clears throat> so eight times in this chapter so far it says Moses did as the Lord commanded 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 there isn't a single thing that what Moses did that he did because he felt that he should be doing something everything he did from placing the bread on the table, he did it as the Lord commanded. He obeyed. Now, what was the result of him obedience? Let's go. We're not done. After, so Moses finished the work, verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. What's the point? Just look at this, the life of Moses. First time when Moses encounters God, he sees a what? Burning bush. Yeah? It's just a bush that is on fire. And from there, God says, okay, Moses, go and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses obeys. He goes to Egypt. He brings the people. When he comes back, it's not just a bush that is on fire. The whole mountain is on fire. And it is in that very presence of God, Moses steps in for 40 days and 40 nights. He gets the Ten Commandments. He gets the blueprint for the tabernacle. He is in the very presence of God, Moses, for 40 days and 40 nights. But the same guy in Exodus 40, could not enter the presence. So the point is, every time you obey God, okay, listen to me very carefully, every time you obey Him, the next time you meet Him, He will always show Himself bigger. Can I say that again? Every time you obey Him, the next time He meets you, He will show Himself bigger in your life. The first time he may come as a burning bush. The next time the whole mountain will be on fire. And the third time you may not even be able to enter. If you obey me, I will manifest myself to you. Are you with me? Right? Um, and look at the life of Jesus. Um, I'm going to give you a bunch of scriptures and I want you to write it down. Ready? Okay. And then, and then I want you to read it later. Ready? Okay. It's all from the Gospel of John. John chapter 5, verse 19. Right, just write it down and then you can read it later. Okay, I'm going to give you at least 10 different scriptures. John chapter 5, verse 19. John chapter 5, verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 41. John chapter 5, verse 19. John chapter 5, verse 30. John chapter 5, verse 41. John chapter 6, verse 38. John chapter 7, verse 16. John chapter 7, verse 28. John chapter 8, verse 42. John chapter 8, verse 50. John chapter 14, verse 10. 
in John chapter 14, verse 24. That's, was, that's the last one. Let's say that again, everything. Okay, from the first, John chapter 5, verse 19. John 5, verse 30. John 5, verse 41. John 6, verse 38. John 7, verse 16. John 7, verse 28. John 8, verse 42. John 8, verse 50. John 14, verse 10. And John 14, verse 24. That's the last one. Okay, so I'm just going to read everything that you will find in these verses. It says, this is Jesus. He's saying, the Son can do nothing of himself. I can of my own self do nothing. My judgment is just because I seek not my own will. John 5.41 says, I receive not glory from men. John 6.38 says, I have not come to do my own will. John 7.16 says, my teaching is not mine. John 7.28 says, I have not come of myself. I do nothing of myself. I have not come of myself, but he sent me. I seek not my own glory. The words that I say, I speak not from myself. The word which you hear is not mine. This is Jesus saying, time and time again, Jesus is saying that everything I do and say is not my own thing, is what I hear the Father tells me to do. Okay, look up. <clears throat> look at me. Jesus, the Son of God, lived a life of complete obedience, absolute surrender. We, you, you all make the declarations every morning, right? What is the last line of the declaration? To him, I am in absolute surrender. And this is what absolute surrender looks like. Jesus, the Son of God, God himself. He's saying, what I teach is not my teaching. It's my Father's teaching. What I say is not my words, my Father's words. What I do is not my own thing. My Father tells me to do. Now, we learned, we looked at the life of Moses from Exodus 40 and the life of Jesus in the Gospel of John. How much more should we? How much more should you and me live a life of surrender and absolute obedience? Are you with me? Right? So, how to live a lifestyle of worship? Three simple points is be kind and generous, live a life of holiness and live a life of absolute surrender or obedience. Amen? Okay, everybody good online? All okay? All right. And so with that, we complete the course. Uh, congratulations. Um, yeah, so I'll let you know that if we are going to have classes from the following week or not, um, you, I'll put it on the stream section. Okay. Otherwise, uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining, and I hope there's something that you could you've learned uh, in this course. All right. Thanks, guys, for joining, and God bless. See you.